Welcome to Encounter Wargaming, I'm Jay, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 3rd Ed Chaos Space Marine Codex. Codex Chaos Space Marines. So, this is super nostalgic for me, especially because this is when I started playing Chaos. Now, like I say, I started playing the game in 2nd Ed, but uh, I was playing Orcs back then, and of course I can... They completely redid my orc army in third, but uh, in third I really started to do chaos, so that's something. And as you guys know, I am a huge chaos fan, so this is awesome looking back on this. Uh, why don't I just shut up and get into it? <laughs> so, badass cover art, again, that sort of third ed style that we only we only really see this style of artwork in the third ed uh, books. I'm not sure who this artist is again. Maybe you guys can help me out. Uh, actually, I was going to say comment below and let me know who this artist is, but in fact, let's open her up and it'll probably tell me who the cover art is. So let's just get right into it. So as usual, some nice colored pictures of some battlefields. As you can see, we're still using second dead models. we got the old second dead rhinos here. Um, all the pewter Katachan guardsmen. The old school one pose plastic berserkers, which is awesome. In fact, they've worked a couple of the multi part chaos space means in there. Look at the old blood letters and how silly they were back then. I remember those guys in Second Dead. Death to the False Emperor! So, unlike usual, their table of contents has actually just been condensed into this weird little column along the side. That's really strange, as well as all the publisher information. So uh, this one we're looking at 1999, cool, so we're keeping on par with all the other ones we've been doing. And in fact, I really want to find out who did the cover art, so let me just take a look here. Book cover art, Wayne England. Sweet. Okay. I guess that's Wayne, Eng Wayne England's style of artwork. Like I say, that really showed up in all these third-ed books. You didn't really see that style of artwork before this. And I don't r recall even seeing any of it in fourth or fifth, so... As usual, we've got an introduction, sort of just showing, telling you what the Chaos Marines, Marines are, why play them in 40k, how to use this book, uh, as well as, of course, some nice little fluff pieces here and there. Now, like I say, in these Third Ed books, they did them much thinner than the Second Ed ones, and even the Fourth Ed ones, for that matter. So, um, the fluff was just little snippets like that. They didn't give you pages upon pages upon pages of fluff. Because, as I've said before in the past, it seems the reason they did this was because a lot of the fans were saying that they didn't want to spend an arm and a leg on a book that was just full of fluff when there was no rules, and all they really wanted was the rules. So they just gave you books with basically rules, and then of course everyone complained that there was no fluff, and so they went back to that in fourth. But for right now, this is what we get. So again, standard force organization chart, just showing you an example here. Again, this is the chart we basically used all the way up until seventh. Um, yeah, even in third and fourth, this was sort of your standard like pickup game chart. Like I say, all the scenarios had uh, special four sword charts that went along with them, but of course this was your standard, and you'll see that as your uh, main detachment in seventh even. So this is where it all started, guys. It evolved from here all the way up until seventh, until of course our recent redo of the rules in eighth. Um, but seventh has still maintained in Horus Heresy, so that's something. So this is basically where it all comes from, guys. If you're a Horus Heresy player, this is where the rules sort of started, and they were just basically amended uh, in future years. So right off the bat, we've got special rules. Um, so summoning demons, like I said here. Uh, I mean, sorry, like I said in the last video, there was no Chaos Demons book. There was no separate army for Chaos Demons. So in this book... Um, they put the rules for demons, and in fact, you're going to be summoning them in. And the strange part is, in fourth, what they actually did is they got rid of all the individual demons and just made, like, generic lesser demons and greater demons, um, and then later on gave the demons their own book. But that's in fourth. We're getting way ahead of ourselves. In third, you basically were just able to summon demons like this, basically just like reserves. So on turn two, they came in on a four plus. On turn three, they came in on a three plus. And on turn four, they come in on a two plus. 
Uh, note that greater demons cannot be summoned like this, they must use demonic possession. Now back in these days, in order to bring a greater, greater demon onto the battlefield, you literally had to sacrifice one of your characters. Uh, let's just read it over quickly. The second turn, instead of rolling dice to see if the greater demon appears on the table as described above, check that the demon has possessed a model and enters play. To see if a model has been possessed, pick any character model in the army. Apart from another demon, obviously. Uh, if you roll a six, the model has been possessed, as described below. Note that no modifiers apply to this dice roll. Uh, if you fail to roll a six, just pick another character and roll a dice again. Keep on doing this until you have either rolled a six or all of your characters must be rolled for, but the Chaos player gets to pick the order the dice rolls are made in. If no character is possessed, the greater demon does not arrive, but you can check again the following turn. Uh, if once a model is possessed, simply remove the Chaos Space Marine model and replace it with the Greater Demon model. Uh, if this removed is destroyed, the model that has been removed is destroyed and counts towards victory points, blah 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 blah. So, this was problematic in a way, I remember these days, because um, you didn't want to kit your characters out too much with too much crazy war gear, just to have them like swallowed by a Greater Demon. Unless you weren't using Greater Demons, and then go for it. But, uh... I think this is super fluffy, but it's not super fun when it comes to game terms because, like you say, you may intend this, like, and and people would notice too, because if you had a, a champion with just a bolt pistol and chainsword, meanwhile you had all your other champions with, like, lightning claws and power fists, it was pretty clear which one you were going to try and make the greater demon. And so people would go for that unit first, and then, uh, and then forcing you to give up, like, a power fist dude to bring your greater demon out rather than just this, you know, 15 point cheap champion or 30 point, I guess, in this edition. Um, just, again, finishing this up quickly, basically, uh, Korn adds plus, plus one of your dice roll if troops are within six inches of the enemy in the assault phase. Oh, that's interesting. I thought it would be plus one attack. Nurgle adds plus one your dice roll if enemy vehicles were killed or enemy vehicles destroyed in the shooting phase. Oh, this is for summoning. So these extras... Ah, uh, okay. So you had plus one for summoning corn demons if you're within six inches of the enemy. Plus one for summoning Nurgle demons if you killed a vehicle in the shooting phase. Plus one for Slanesh demons if you force your opponent to take a morale check. Fail a morale check, sorry. And Zinch adds plus one to your dice roll if any psychic powers were used. Awesome. Like I say, in this edition, psychic powers are basically weapons used in the shooting phase or the assault phase or whatever, so it was actually... And they used a leadership-based test to use them, so basically it was super easy to get a power off. Zinch would not have problems summoning in demons in that case. So now we're looking at the Chaos Armory here. Pretty straightforward, exactly what you'd expect. Um... Yeah, okay, so it was the 3.5 where they did that crazy Demon Prince shenanigans, and we'll talk about that in the future one, so sorry to get off topic there, guys. But uh, basically, yeah, this is it. So if you've given your guys a mark, you get access to these gifts here, which basically added, you know, extra war gear. Uh, for the most part, though, it's your standard stuff. Um, you know, your standard weapons, power fist, plasma pistol, blah, 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 blah. Sorcerers can have sorcerer staffs, uh, combi weapons... War gear, you had bionics, chaos armor, which is basically, as I, if I remember correctly, artificer armor, right? It's a two-up save instead of three-up save. Uh, chaos space marine bike, jump pack, crack grenades, mastercrafted weapons, sorcerer scrolls, interesting for sorcerers only. Spiky bits, there's something I missed. So I believe that was either a plus one attack or a re-roll to your uh, one attack dice or something like that, kind of like mastercrafted. Just because your guys had spiky stuff on them, super cool. Um, Yep, Terminator armor, and then your marks of chaos. Uh, vehicle upgrades are your standard stuff that we're still used to seeing nowadays, I suppose. Ah, uh, demonic possession. That was something that was fun to add onto your rhinos and stuff like that. Like literally, your guy would get out, and the rhino would like eat your dudes as it came across the battlefield. Uh, the cool thing was they actually had god-specific vehicle upgrades, which don't exist anymore, of course. 
So Solnesh, he had a warp amp, which was basically like, you know, a sonic attack. Uh, Nurgle Infestation, I believe, made the uh, tank tougher. You got Corsicating Warp Flame, which basically as guys assault the tank, they get hit back immediately. And of course the Destroyer, as you charge in, the tank gets to make a bunch of attacks, which is cool because in this edition your tanks didn't get to make attacks like they do currently in 8th. So, just like the Space Marines, we have two levels of Chaos Lord, which is interesting because they've done away with all that now, and in fact, the Chaos Lords now are even more powerful than the Exalted Lord here. So you got a Mighty Lord and an Exalted Lord, and in fact, you could upgrade them to be a Chaos Sorcerer. So there you go. So you could have a Sorcerer Lord leading Zinch unit. Um, so the Thousand Sons now have Sorcerer Lords, but in the basic Chaos Space Marine book, there is no Sorcerer Lords. There's just Sorcerers, right? So if you really want a Sorcerer Heavy Army, you kind of have to go Thousand Sons, I guess, rather than feeling from the core book. But again, we're not here to talk about 8th, we're here to talk about 3rd, so <laughs> let's get back to it. Uh, yep, standard stuff, you can have a retinue, takes from this war gear list, blah 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 blah. Again, like I say, these entries are very uh, short because basically all they're doing is telling you refer to this page, refer to that page. And there was a lot of that in this edition, I think, to avoid... Uh, reprinting things a bunch of times. So there's a lot of refer to this, refer to that, refer to this, refer to that. Whereas now they just put like basically everything in the data slate that you need. So all you really need to look at is that one data slate instead of flipping around this book, that book, whatever, go to rule book. Fucking. You'll see even that they do a lot of supplementary codices in this edition. Um, which means you're flipping back and forth a lot. And actually, to tell you the truth, it kind of stayed that way all the way through, even up until the end of 7th there. And it's still like that in Horus Heresy. You need like fucking 10 books to play Horus, 10 books on the table at a time to play Horus Heresy, which annoys me. But anyway. Um, so your Chaos Lord's retinue, this is interesting. Instead of just having an entry for the retinue, much like they would uh, Space Marine um, retinue, they actually allowed you to take Cult Marines as your Lord's retinue. So, for example, if your lord has the mark of Zine, she gets Thousand Suns as his retinue. If he has the mark of Corn, he gets Corn Berserkers as his retinue. Nurgle, Plague Marines, Slanesh, Noise Marines. And if you're just undivided, it's just basic veteran Chaos Space Marines. All of these would be included in the Elite section, is my understanding. Uh, yep, yeah, so we're still going through HQs. We've got a Demon Prince. Cool. Uh, just skimming over them quick, yeah, nothing really special, you give him wings for 10 points, he gets marks of chaos just like everybody else. Uh, fearless monstrous creature, invulnerable save, standard, 5 up invulnerable save, wings give him a 12 inch move, he can have psychic powers if he is not corn, right? Second team and prince can use psychic powers that they may choose or in the armory section, described, uh, found in the war gear section. So it actually doesn't say that... He can't have psychic powers if he's corn. But I guess there is no corn psychic powers. Right, let's check out the psychic powers section here. Hmm. Don't see a psychic powers section in the war gear list. So, what does it say here? Choose. The powers that they may choose are included in the armory section of this list. Armory. Oh, there you go. They're actually included as gifts. Interesting. So, undivided, you get Doom Bolt. Uh, yeah, of course, there's no uh, corn one. Nurgle has Stream of Corruption. Slanesh has Fleshy Curse. And Zinch. Flames of Zinch. Cool. Awesome. Sorcerer, again. Absolutely no options. It's basically just, here's your sorcerer, give him stuff from the armory. Independent character, you can have psychic powers, pretty straightforward. Greater demons, see, as I say, we actually have bloodthirsters, great unclean ones, lord of change, and keeper of secrets. And again, these would have to possess a character model to bring them onto the battlefield. So not only are you paying 140 points for a bloodthirster, but you're going to have to sacrifice, you know, a 30 point champion at least. So you're looking at 170 tax to take a bloodthirster. Um, if you gave that champion no war gear options, that is. And why would you do that? Because, especially because it's 
iffy as to which character will actually end up possessed. Now, of course, you want the one that you're going for first, but again, if that fails, you have to go through all of your characters until they're all done. So, it's, again, super fluffy, but it's a pain in the butt when it comes to actual game stuff. And there you go. The, uh... Creator demons of each individual god automatically come with the, the psychic power listed in the war gear list, so I guess that would be included in their points, because you can't really give these guys any upgrades. Yeah. Yeah, I know they have no options. They're fearless and fearsome, which is interesting, they cause fear. Which is funny, because the uh, psychology rules are very slim in this edition, but I guess they're even... I guess they're actually more than they currently are in 8th, so... Is what it is. Moving on. Elites. Got Terminators, of course. They have Deep Strike. Um, yep, Terminator can remember with an Auto Cannon or a Heavy Flamer. Any model may upgrade a Combi Bolter to a Combi Flamer, Combi Melta, Power Fist, Lightning Claw. Now, they actually have included separate points here because the War Gear section would include those things um, as if they are, had like a chain sword to start with. Whereas this, they start with a power weapon, so I guess they've taken off the cost of a power weapon, taken off the cost of a combi bolter for adding on these extra things, hence why a lightning claw is 5 points instead of like 20 points. Uh, yep, you can have a champion for plus 15 points, additional equipment from the Chaos Armory, Terminators, Deep Strike, yep, standard. Veterans, so there's your veteran marines, basically... Huh, there's still only one attack. I guess they just have an extra leadership. That's interesting, because in later editions they gave veterans an extra attack. So all they are is a higher leadership. All your cult marines are looking like their leadership 9. I'm just going to look at the standard cast space marines. No, they're leadership 9 and 10. So what makes veterans better? No pistols, combat weapon. Two models might be armed with a heavy weapon or a special weapon. Okay, that's just like your normal Chaos Space Marine squads. Well, they can have two specials or one special and one heavy, so these guys can have two heavies, I guess. Mounted a Rhino. They get Infiltrate. Okay, so that's all they are. They're just Chaos Space Marines with Infiltrate. Interesting, they give made them 18 points. What's the cost of a Chaos Space Marine? 15 points. So it's like three points a model just to give them Infiltrate. Huh. All right, whatever. Moving on, Corn Berserkers. These are plus one attack Marines. Yep, standard Space Marine stat line, except they have two attacks, three on the champion. Uh, squad may have frag and crack grenades. Upgraded to a champion. Two may exchange their bolt pistols for plasma pistols. So that's the only special weapon they can have. Fair enough. And this is when they actually came out with a new multi-part plastic kit for the Corn Berserkers, which actually is still the same kit as today. So that's the kit that the uh, current Chaos Space Marines were based on, and at this time they really just came out with this kit, and we were still using the old Fish Head Plague Marines, um, and the old Second Dead Chaos Space Marines, as you can see here, and the artwork looks very much like the Second Dead Pseudo Fish Head um, normal Chaos Space Marines. Until they came out with multi-part kit, and then with the Plague Marines even, they came out with a pewter upgrade kit for the standard Chaos Space Marines, which was really just torsos and the odd shoulder pad and stuff here and there. But looked light years better than the old multi, yeah, I shouldn't say multi-pose, single-pose Plague Marine plastics. So these are basically, yep, just your Chaos Space Marine with Toughness 5. And, in fact, I was saying how they all have Leadership 9, it's good to note that they have Leadership 9. Excuse me, because uh, Space Marines, normal Space Marines, had a leadership of 8, but they had, and they shall know no fear. So, Chaos Marines didn't have anything like that, they just had an extra point of leadership. Now, obviously all your Cult Marines are fearless, 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 uh, but your normal Space Marines and Veterans, as well as Terminators, are not fearless. So that's something to note. Even if you were to give these guys a mark, they would not be. Can you even give them a mark? Wow, you can't even give Terminators a mark. Lame. 
Huh. Now in third, they actually came out with Index Stardis army lists later on in the White Dwarfs, which allowed you to take Cult Terminators, Thousand Sun Terminators, Corn Berserker Terminators. And in fact, it started to give you, uh, if you took a Corn Berserker squad, for example, in 8 or 16 uh, models, you got a free champion upgrade, so you didn't have to pay that extra 15 points. Or Corn Berserker's 18 points, actually. Plague Marines is extra 20 points. Wow. Um, for the aspiring champion, if you fielded your units in those numbers, they automatically got the aspiring champion. Thousand Suns, of course, they've just listed the basic Thousand Sun rules here. Um, so clearly, wow, they don't have the aspiring sorcerers attached. That's weird. Five and ten thousand Sun cast Space Marines. Now, there you go, troop choice. I believe it said that for these two. Yeah. So if your Lord has a Mark of Nurgle, you can take Plague Marines as troop choices. Uh, Mark of Korn, you take Korn Berserkers as troop choices. Mark of Zinch, you take Thousand Suns as troop choices. Huh, strange that they don't have the Aspiring Sorcerers leading the units. Hmm. This was before they actually came out with the Pewter Upgrade Sprue again for the Thousand Suns, much like they did for the Plague Marines. Now they have brand new plastics, which are absolutely spectacular. But the old Upgrade Sprue would come with a Aspiring Sorcerer a pewter aspiring sorcerer model and uh, a unit of cast space marines with the pewter thousand sun upgrades which I believe were just heads maybe some shoulder pads and possessed marines the introduction of possessed marines this is the first time we've ever seen possessed marines in Warhammer 40,000 which is pretty cool so as you can see they're just a normal space marine stat line bolter close combat weapon you can put them in a rhino if you want however they get this uh, table to roll for their possessions. So this is this is the crazy part that you weren't, you, you couldn't choose which ability they got, which made them very uh, problematic on the battlefield. Because some of these are really good, and some of them are just kind of meh. You know, like plus one attack, eh. But uh, vorpal blades and claws are basically their own power weapons. That's insane, right? Being able to move twelve inches instead of six inches. That's pretty cool. Causing fear. And, you know, an extra strength, an extra attack didn't make a huge difference. Uh, it's funny that their save becomes invulnerable if you roll a 6. They don't automatically come with a 5-up invulnerable save like they did in later editions. Um, they have a 3-up save, and then that becomes invulnerable, which actually is pretty crazy to have a 3-up invulnerable save, especially in this edition, or in any edition for that matter. Uh, troops, so we've got... Chaos yeah, Space Marines, of course, your basic Chaos Space Marines, they are the same as they've always been. Um, yeah, you can have up to one heavy weapon, one special weapon. Wow, it doesn't say they can have two special weapons. One other Chaos Space Marine, I'll call them. Yeah, shitty. Hmm, I guess it's fourth onwards then, the, the two special weapons, if you don't take a heavy. Take a second special, because it actually doesn't say that here. It says one Space Marine. We have the following. Missile Launcher, Auto Cannon, Heavy Bolter, Last Cannon. One other Chaos Space Marine may have the following. melt gun Flamer, Plasma Pistol, or Plasma Gun. Huh. And then Frag and Crack Grenades. Inspiring Champion for 15 points. Rhino for 50 points. Boom. Standard. Space Marines. Now, demon packs, here you go. They did put them as a generic demon pack entry, but they put here um, what models you use to represent them. So, making them corn demons, you use blood letters. Nurgle demons are plague bearers. Slanish demons are demonettes. And Zinch demons are pink and blue horrors. So, respectively, corn uh, demons are this stat line with plus one strength. Plague Bearers are this stat line with plus one toughness. Slanesh is this stat line with plus one attack. It's interesting. And Zinch, they get treated as a single model having a shooting attack on a f roll of a four plus, right, because they don't have a ballistic skill. So their hits on four pluses with the following strength four, AP six, assault two. So it's basically just a two shot pistol. It's kind of whack. Oh, I suppose there is, like, you know, a unit of 10 of them, so you could technically do 20 strength 4 shots at 12 inches. That's not great at all. Oh. 
Boo on the horrors. Boo. And the Nurglings, obviously, is a separate troop choice. That's interesting. They do not, they are not summoned. That's pretty cool. They start on the battlefield. Neat. Okay. I had forgotten that they were even a, just a standard troop choice. It's cool that you don't have to summon them. However, the fast attack choices now we're getting. Oh, sorry, I skipped the rhino. There it is. I mean, it's a rhino. Really not much to say there. They have standard vehicle upgrades from Thing. Starts with a Storm Bolter. Havoc Launcher, Storm Bolter, Searchlight, Smoke Launchers. Yep, standard upgrades. Carry, carry 10 Chaos Space Marines, cannot carry Terminators. Alright, so we didn't have as much of a wide array of demon models in this edition to choose from. So for Demonic Beasts now, they only have the three god options. There is no Nurgle option, so I guess Beasts of Nurgle weren't really considered part of this. Um, Corn Beasts are Flesh Hounds, obviously. Slanesh Beasts are Fiends, and Zinch Beasts are Flamers. That's interesting. We'll have the same shitty... 12 inch range, strength 4 attack. Boo. They all have a 5 of vulnerable save. They are summoned to the battlefield just like the other demons. Cool. Cavalry, though. Again, we didn't have Blood Crusher models yet. So for Slanesh Cavalry, we have Demonets. For Nurgle Cavalry, we have Plague Bearers Riding Beasts of Nurgle. Okay, neat. Uh, and for Zinch, we have Discs. Yeah, it's it, just Discs. Huh. I guess they do have dudes on them, but I guess... Weird. Huh. Because the only model that existed for the discs was that one from Second Ed, who li that literally had like a sorcerer. Uh, I guess it was just a Chaos Champion model on it. Um, and in fact, it may even be a remnant of Rogue Trader. It may not even be made in Second. It's a pretty old model, though, at that point. Even at this point. Which is kind of brutal. Uh, bikers... I mean, not much to say there, except that they have scythe, like, basically your Chaos Space Marine Biker, right? I mean, your basic Space Marine Biker, just Chaos, with the extra leadership. Um, however, they did give them two attacks, base, that's kind of cool. And they have the scythes and blades, um, at plus one to their attacks characteristic, oh, okay. Doesn't say it's included in their profile, it says it just adds. Okay. So, in fact, they have even more attacks and they're getting plus one for sure. Wow, bikers were gross in this edition. That's actually really good. Oh, and here we go. And then we got juggernauts. So, I guess blood crushers weren't even a thing yet, but they had juggernauts just as their own. Yeah. Juggernauts just running around on their own. Crazy. Bunch of demon cows. 45 points a model. Wow. Toughness six, though. Strength 5, Initiative 5. Wow. Only two wounds each. Mm. Still, summons just like any other demons. Difficult to destroy, so they have a 5 of vulnerable save. Yeah, nothing special there. And the introduction of Chaos Raptors. So in Second Ed, they never allowed you to have Chaos like Assault Marines with the jump packs. Um, the fluff logic there, at least, was that they weren't able to maintain that technology since the heresy, um, because it's just way too hard to maintain without the proper Adeptus Mechanicus access. But in this edition, they brought in the Raptors. Super cool models, I thought, at the time, anyway. And in fact, I had quite a few of these old-school models up in, in my Night Lord's Army up until recent, which I actually just recently sold. I wish I hadn't, but I needed the money, so what can I do? But uh, I had all the old winged... Uh, Chaos Raptors, which just suited Night Lords way too perfectly because of the wings on them. And uh, they're basically just Assault Marines. I mean, they have jump packs. Um, oh, they cause fear, which is interesting. And they have hit and run. That's neat. So they can assault and then jump out three, six inches. Just because. Uh, two can have either a Plasma Pistol, Melt the Gun, Flamer, or a Plasma Gun. Yep. Sparing Champion, 15 points, okay, nothing special there, but the first time we've seen Chaos Raptors, and in fact they're 0-1, to one. it's interesting to note, so that 
they're saying now that they do exist. There are Chaos Space Marines with jump packs flying around, but they're so rare that we're only going to let you take one unit in your army. Okay, so be it. Uh, Chaos Havocs. So, again, just your Devastator Squad. Basic Chaos Space Marines with four heavy weapons. Uh, yeah, and crazy enough, they don't even have the option for four specials, because in the last few editions, um, if you didn't take the heavies, you could take four special weapons. So it's interesting that they can only have heavy weapons in this edition, or in this book, I should say. Interesting that they've put Noise Marines as a heavy support choice, because they are, like the other cult marines, a troop choice if your dude has the Marcus Lanesh, your lord has the Marcus Lanesh, so that's neat. Uh, yep, Fearless, they have Noise Weapons. Please refer to the War Gear section. Okay, so we'll have to check and see what noise weapons do compared to normal weapons. Uh, three models can have a Blastmaster or a Doom Siren. Hmm, it's kind of, up to three models in the squad might have either a Blastmaster or a Doom Siren. So it's not just the champion gets the Doom Siren. Weird. The entire squad may be equipped with Crank Crack Grenades. Uh, aspiring Champion. Automatically, his armor with a bolt pistol, close combat weapon, and doom siren. Maybe be given additional equipment from the armory. Crazy. Frick, man. You could have four doom sirens in a unit? Ew. Now, obliterators. Again, this is the first time obliterators have appeared in the game. And in this edition, they were mutated marines, not mutated terminators like they became in 4th. So if you see the original obliterator models from back in 3rd, they're very small. They're just slightly bigger than a space marine, and they fit on a 25 mil base, which is kind of cool. Um, then in 4th, they redid the obliterators to be more like just larger terminators, uh, which made a whole bunch more sense, actually. But uh, anyway, this is the first time they were introduced, and... As you can see, they have a Space Marine stat line. They do a two-up save, but I think that's to denote the fact that they have Chaos Armor as opposed to Terminator Armor. Um, yep, Fearless. They have body weapons. Their bodies morph into weapons. Um, no two models may use the same weapon in the same turn. Interesting. You can't just have, like, a unit of six of them just fire six LAS cannons. They actually all have to use a, a different model, or a different weapon. So your options are Assault Cannon, which is crazy. What? Because Chaos don't have Assault Cannons otherwise. That's just nuts. Assault Cannon, Heavy Bolter, LAS Cannon, Multi Melta, Twin Link Storm Bolter. Huh. Weird. Because even then, Chaos had Combi Bolters, not Storm Bolters, so it's a Twin Link Storm Bolter. Because a Combi Bolter is a Twin Link Bolter, a Storm Bolter would be an Assault Weapon, so it would be Twin Linked and Assault Weapon. It would be four shots re-rolling. Well, I guess it would be two shots re-rolling at full range instead of one shot re-rolling or two shots at half range. Weird. Twin Linked Meltagun, Power Weapon and Power Fist. Gonna read if they can use the. If they're stationary in the movement phase, they morph into heavy weapons. The exception is the Twin Link Storm Bolter and Close Combo Weapon. No two models may use the same. It doesn't say they can't, and it doesn't say they can use the Power Weapon and Power Fist in the same turn. In the shooting phase and the assault phase, if you wish. Okay, cool. In the assault phase, they have a power weapon and a power fist. Power weapon or power fist, I suppose. And no two models can use the same weapon, so if you had three in the unit, how would you? Weird. Anyway, they can deep strike. They can't charge. Now that's interesting. Literators are slow moving and prefer to rely on shooting. Destroying them. They may, therefore, not charge or move in the assault phase. If they defeat an opponent, they will not pursue and must consolidate instead. Hmm. Crazy. Chaos Dreadnought. 
So we're still calling it a Chaos Dreadnought at this point, because that's basically what it is. Uh, I think it wasn't till 6 that they referred to it as a Hellbrute, once they finally released that uh, starter set with the Hellbrute in it. Then they became Hellbrutes all of a sudden. Whatever. Still a Chaos Dreadnought. I still call them Chaos Dreadnoughts once in a while. Um, standard options that we're used to seeing. I have a twin-linked auto cannon, twin-linked glass cannon, twin-linked heavy bolter, multi-melta or plasma cannon. And you can have vehicle upgrades, and then of course there's the table that you roll on every turn to see what happens to it. Whether it charges straight at the enemy in a blood frenzy, two to five it functions as normal, and six it gets to fire all its weapons twice if I remember correctly. Uh, Dread on my fire its weapons twice, but may not move in the assault phase. Okay. Cool. Uh, Predator, standard Predator. No, in the Space Marine book they had the Annihilator and the Predator separate. Uh, for Chaos they just put them as one entry, but it's basically the same thing. You know, you either have a twin like glass cannon or an auto cannon turret, and then you either have heavy bolters or last cannons as the sponsons. Nothing major. Uh, and then Land Raiders, once again, in this edition there was only one kind of Land Raider. It wasn't until the Black Templar book came out that we got the Crusader, uh, and even then Chaos don't get access to that, but uh, yeah, Land Raider is what it is. And this, like I say, was the first time they came out with the current plastic Land Raider kit. So they came out with new Rhino kit and new Land Raider kit, because the old Land Raider kit they actually hadn't carried for years even up until this point. You just couldn't get them. Um, and at the time, when they came out with this Land Raider kit, I was just absolutely blown away by it because it was literally like the largest plastic model Games Workshop had ever produced. Now, of course, they've just completely blown it out of the water with Bane Blades and Stompas and Lord of Skulls and all that kind of stuff. But uh, at this time, the Land Raider was the biggest model, uh, plastic model, that they had ever made. Probably the biggest model they had ever made. Um, and I remember being, you know... This 14 year old kid going, holy crap, the thing's huge. <laughs> and then when I was like, what, 24 or something, 25, they came out with the Bane Blade. And I was like, holy crap, this thing is huge. <laughs> like, the Land Raider just looks puny now in comparison. So here's the war gear section. Awesome. So it's just explaining all of the things that are in the armory. Um, now, there was something I wanted to look up. What was it? Take a look over here, Mastercrafted Weapons, Twin Link Bolters, Jump Packs, Lightning Claws, Power Weapons, Sorcerer Scroll, Sorcerer Staff, Spiky Bits. Now, let's make sure I was right. You can reroll one hit in the Assault Phase, yep, for Spiky Bits. Chaos Armor is just a 2-up armor save, that's what I was saying it was. Um, hmm. Weapon, sorcerer scroll, sorcerer stuff. Huh. Alright. And the vehicle upgrades, standard. Of course, getting warp pl flame. Yep, any model attacking the vehicle suffers a strength D6 AP4 hit. Thing. Possession ignores shaken or stunned. No effect on demonically possessed vehicle. Can no longer carry any troops. Oh, I guess they changed that into in fourth then. This is, this is saying if it's possessed, it can't carry any troops. That's crazy. Maybe it was in fourth, and that they made it so that like it could still carry troops, but it would eat one dude once in a while. <laughs> oh, the warp amp. I was going to look at that too. Vehicle equipped with a devastating device to find to amplify emotions and sensations, projecting resonant warp energies, rune encrusted horns and pipes. Closer a creature comes to the amp, the harder it is for it to maintain discipline and conscious thought. Enemy, mo enemy models within 18 inches of a warp amp suffer negative 1 leadership when taking morale tests. If they're within 12 inches, negative 2. 6 inches, negative 3. Ew. That would be annoying to throw a few of those into your enemy's deployment zone. Nurgle infestation just adds plus 1 to their armor rating. Okay. Just like plus 1 toughness, right? 
cool. Now we get to look at special characters. So, to start it off, of course, the man himself, Abaddon the Despoiler. Uh, let's take a good look here. Yep, stuff we're used to seeing. He's got the Talon of Horrors, he's got the Drachnian Demon Sword. Terminator armor, but with a 4-up and vulnerable state instead of a 5. And you can have a retinue of his finest warriors. See the entry in the army list for details. Okay. Cool. Airman. Mm, yep. Master of Sorcery. So he's got... Doombolt, Stream of Corruption, Fleshy Curse. He's got all of the psychic powers. So even the ones of the other gods, which is interesting. But he's also got Infernal Bolts. Which again, is a 12-inch range, Strength 4 attack. But APX, what does that mean? Mm, he used a pistol as a psychic power. It counts as a shooting attack. Otherwise, armor saves are ignored. Okay, so you can take invulnerable saves against it, but no normal armor saves. So that's not bad, I guess. It's basically just a pistol attack. Doom Rider. Now, there's a character that we only, like, we've seen in a couple of the other books so far in the third, that there are characters that are in this edition and never we never saw them before and we'll never see them again. Doom Rider was one of them. It's basically just a badass Slanesh dude on a motorbike or on a... Chaos bike, I guess. He's summoned to the battlefield. Just like a demon. Huh. Wheels of fire. Even though he's on a bike, he moves like a jump pack. Crazy. He's got some He's treated as having an invulnerable save, and they're more, therefore his armor save against all wounds he takes. Normally pierces her. She's got a four up and vulnerable save as opposed to a three up armor save. That's crazy. And other demons had a five up and vulnerable save, so that's weird. He comes, he goes. Roll a d6 for Doom Rider at the end of each cast turn. On a one, he disappears mysteriously and will not be able to come back in the same battle. That sucks possible for Doom Rider to vanish on the same term that he appears. Doom Rider does not count as having been killed for victory purpose if he vanishes in this way. Okay, cool. Cypher. Now, I believe this was the introduction of Cypher as well. And it's funny here because I believe they let you take him in other armies other than Chaos Bay. Yeah. A Chaos Space Marine Army or Imperial Guard Army. Yes, Imperial Guard! Exclamation point. <laughs> May include Cypher as a special character. Take him, he counts as an elite choice. It must be used exactly as described below. Um, cannot have extra equipment from the armory, obviously. It's a Mastercrafted Bolt Pistol, Mastercrafted Plasma Pistol, Tan Phase Knife. So there you go. Counts as a power weapon. So. We actually haven't seen the Necron Codex appear yet, so the, ne the Catan are not actually a thing. They're only mentioned here and in the Assassin. Remember we talked about uh, Calidus Assassin, the chick? Gets a Catan Phase Knife. So it's the same thing here. He's got a Catan Phase Knife. Now, if Cypher is on the battlefield, you must roll 1d6 for each squad, for a squad that he joins. On a roll of a 1, the members of the squad argue amongst themselves. They may not do anything for the rest of the turn. Cypher can carry on as normal. Animosity rule only affects squads that are equivalent that have no effect on characters and vehicles. In addition, this rule does not affect any squad of fallen angels. Huh. I didn't think there were fallen angels in this edition. Oh, okay. It's included in his thing. Okay, cool. Cypher is protected by an unknown chaos power who spirits him away at the last moment. Represents by Cypher as a 4-up and vulnerable save on 3d6. He attacks and damage reduces his wounds to zero. A special save that is made when Cypher is killed and may be taken after his armor save. Okay, weird. 
So he's got a normal 3 up save, and then he's got a 4 up save on 3d6. So, like, unless you roll 3 ones. Weird. Unless you roll 3 ones, he's not going to uh, fail it. So, remove the model as if he had been killed, but he's not counts as victory points. So, pretty much, he's guaranteed to not count as victory points. Uh, he's able to aim and fire a pistol with each hand. This enables him to fire two weapons in the shooting phase. Mastercrafted bolt pistol, and one is his mastercrafted platinum pistol. If he remains stationary, he may rapid fire the two pistols, letting him take four shots. Cool. Oh, if I remember correctly, in this edition, you can only use one shooting weapon. So if you had a psychic power that shot, was a sh counted as a shooting weapon, there was no point in taking another sh special shooting weapon because you can only use one or the other in any given turn. So, Fallen Angels, how does this work? You may take one, if Cypher is included in an army, you may take one squad of Fallen Angels. Fallen Angels are chosen from the Chaos Space Marine army list and are treated as veteran Chaos Space Marines. If same point value and options, however, Fallen Angels use the and they shall know no fear rules which apply to the Loyalist Space Marines. Cool. They are immune to animosity as described above. Obviously, you can join them without them fighting. Uh, but to test Space Marines of the Dark Angels chapter and must charge them if they are able to. Cool. So you could literally have a unit of Chaos Space Marine veterans, which like I say have a higher leadership than normal Space Marines, but they get and they have Shalom No Fear too, which is pretty cool. And you can put them in an Imperial Guard army. Which like I say in this edition there was no ally rules really. Um, so that's awesome that you could take a unit of Space Marines. Chaos Space Marines with the and they shall know no fear, which is nutty. Uh, now, hunted by the Dark Angels, uh, hunted by members of the Deathwing and Ravenwing in the Dark Angels chapter, all members of the Deathwing, including Dark Angel characters, Ravenwing, Despise, Cypher, and any other fallen angels, and must therefore charge them if they can. Therefore, as long as Cypher is involved in the battle, members of the Deathwing only must move each turn so that they end up at least six inches closer to him in the movement phase. So they literally have to move towards Cypher. You could totally use that to your advantage if you were fighting against Dark Angels. Just put them somewhere like away from the objectives, away from your army where you want the, like literally the Dark Angels have to move towards them and have to assault them if they can. Cool. All right, still continuing on with characters we still know today. Karn the Betrayer, he's got Furious Charge, standard. Gore Child, it's a close combo weapon that always hits on a two plus. Now he's weapon skill seven, so he's gonna be hitting on threes, remember, in these editions. There was no two plus to hit, so that having that rule is awesome. Uh, he's the Betrayer. Attack anyone nearby in a Berserk Fury, friend or foe. Uh, to represent this, roll to hit, but then each player takes it in turn to distribute the hit, starting with the Chaos player, i.e. the Chaos player allocates and works out the effect of the hit, his opponent allocates and works out the effect of the second hit, and so on. Normal restrictions for allocating hits apply. Uh, must be allocated against models in base contact with Karn first, obviously. Then on models within two inches of them. Then these restrictions may hit allocating against any model, including Chaos models. So it makes sense for the Chaos player to keep Karn away from models in his own side as possible. <coughs> Crazy. And he's fearless, as we expect. Fabius Bile. Super cool. Now, yeah, Enhanced Warriors. Okay. So, you can take a unit of Enhanced Warriors, which are basically Chaos Space Marines with Strength 5, Toughness 5, which is uh, gross. Uh, you can have two special weapons in the unit. They have frag grenades. They can be given frag grenades or crack grenades, maybe mounted in a rhino. Then you roll on this table. D6 and the Enhanced Warriors at the start of the battle, okay. On a 1, they get a Berserk Rage. Remove a model and D3 randomly selected models from the squad. Oof. They have to start killing each other. 2 to 5, they get Meltdown, which means their immune system totally breaks down. They die horribly within a few moments. Remove the model as a casualty. Boo. We have to roll a D6 for each dude. Jesus. 
And on a six, you created a monster. Boosted to superhuman levels, add plus one to his characteristics apart from his save. Human body cannot survive for long, boosted in these extremes. After the battle ends, the warrior will die, assuming he didn't die during it, and counts as having been killed for victory points. So even if he didn't die, he still dies for victory points purposes. Now, Fabius Bile himself. Characteristics. Fabius Bile's characteristic was generated randomly. Oh, D6 plus 1, D6 plus 1, D3 plus 2. That's crazy. So he's different characteristics with every battle. Generated randomly before each game. Roll the appropriate dice and modify them as noted. Profile will not remain constant and is re-rolled before each game. Cool. He's got the Chirurgian, which is this crazy-ass backpack. Keeps Bile alive, keeps giving him blood ichor, black ichor around his body, demonic ichor charged with immortal energy of the warp. Uh, gives him a 4-up and vulnerable save, and I'm going to be taken instead of his 3-up save, of course, not as well, obviously. Because in second you could take both, in this edition it was either your normal armor or your invulnerable save, which again, lasted right through, uh, even until the present. You can have his enhanced warriors, okay. He's got the Rod of Torment, which comes as a close combat weapon. Any opponent that suffers more or one or more wounds from the Rod of Torment is immediately disabled by the pain and is removed as a casualty. So that's basically an insta-kill weapon. Awesome. He has a Cyclos Needler, which is a gun that fires a dart of virulent poison, causing the victim to explode. That's the following profile. 12 inches, strength NA, AP6, assault 1. Doesn't have a strength value and always wounds on the roll of a 2+. plus. Gross. If the target is killed, the blast mark, you may place a blast marker centered on the exploding model. <coughs> Excuse me. Roll to hit other models using the rules for blast weapons. Attacks have a strength equal to the exploding model's toughness. Neat. And an AP value of the victim's saving throw, i.e. If you hit a Space Marine, it would be a Strength 4, AP 3 hit. Needler counts as having a Strength of 1 if fired at a vehicle, so it's useless against vehicles, basically. Here we go, the Chaos Gifts. Maybe this is where I was trying to look for something. Yep, so the Doom Siren, there you go. I was saying you could have like three of them in a unit. It's disgusting, because it's a Flame Template with a Strength D6 plus 4. So it's Strength 5 to 10. Ew. Roll the strength each time it's used. Plague Knife, Plague Sword, Rapture Standard, Sonic Blasters, Steve Slinish, Talisman Zinch. There was something I... Ah. Whatever. Doesn't matter. It's your psychic powers. Here we go. Marks just described briefly. So Mark a Corn gives you plus one strength. Uh, mark an Ergo plus one toughness. Slinish plus one attack. And Zinch, they pass psychic tests automatically. Undivided allows you to re-roll your morale checks. Okay, so Chaos yeah, Space Marines have a higher leadership, and if they're undivided, they get to re-roll their test. Rather than the Space Marines, whereas if they fail, they fall back and automatically rally. Right? This way you get a second chance to not fall back. So, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other, I guess, but... I'd probably rather have an they shall know no fear, but anyway. So again, we're finishing off the book with just some fluff. Oh, we're not finished yet, actually, because here come the color pages. But yep, just some fluff on each of the legions. Again, I'm not going to go through fluff in these videos, guys. I might go through fluff videos in the future if you guys want to see them. So if you do, please comment below and I'll start doing fluff videos. But for these, I'm just showing you these awesome books and trying to bring back memories, right? Or for those of you who didn't play in these editions, it's just cool to see the evolution of the game, right? That's why I do these videos. See where it all came from, you know what I mean? So here we go again, we're looking at the old Second Dead stuff. This picture is like right out of the Second Dead book, with the golf green table and everything. These are the old plastics. 
and a cool converted Terminator Lord. Neat. The old metal demon prince. Look at that guy right there. That is so funny looking, eh? Now that was a Warhammer Fantasy model that obviously, of course, they allowed you to use in both games. Um, then they came out with another Metal Demon Prince for 40k specifically before they came out with the current plastic kit, which again can be used in both games. The old Plague Bearers, the old Blood Laters, there you go, showing demon packs. I still like the old Flesh Hounds. I think they look pretty cool. They're almost just as good as the ones we have now anyway. And the old um, Seekers. The demonettes with the big ass crab claws. It's funny that they don't show the de normal demonettes here, but uh, yeah, the big crab claws they used to have. And this was before the, the they did another round of pewters after this again with the very elven looking um, demonettes as opposed to these, which are basically just hideously ugly chicks with crab claws. And the old second dead. Chaos Space Marine bikes, which were just the Space Marine bike kit with a pewter front shield and pewter blades that you threw on the sides. There's the old old blitz. Take a look at those guys. How silly looking are those models? Nuts, right? And like I say, they're Space Marine size. They're not Terminator size, so that's something to note. And there you go. The old pewter and plastic Plague Marines, the Chaos Dreadnought model. I used to have quite a few of these, but I've now since chewed them up for various conversions. Like for my Orc Warboss and Mega Armor, I used the legs as well as for my uh, Death Dread. Anyway. So as usual, they're showing you your basic army. Cool that Dreadnoughts are heavy support choices. It's interesting, because later they made them elites to go in line with the Space Marines. And again, I love that they do this in these books. They don't do that anymore. Where they show you, like, a deployment. This is how you... These are the tactics you should kind of think about when you're deploying your Chaos Space Marines. This is how you summon your demons. You know what I mean? To block your unit and have them just charge into the Catachins before the Catachins get to do anything to the Chaos Space Marines. Using bikes to flank the opponent. They just don't talk about tactics in the Codices anymore. Right? We just don't see that. If you want tactics, you gotta go on online and look up other people's opinions on tactics. Rather than just giving, like, I like this like, neat, neat little thing here that they do in all the books. In fact, like I say, back in this time, I used to, if I was planning an army, I would actually draw out a bunch of circles on a page in, like, these formations, you know what I mean? And think about, like, okay, I'm gonna take these guys moving this way, these guys are gonna go up, and these guys are gonna support those guys. And I'd literally draw it on a sheet with arrows like this and everything. I don't do that anymore. I probably should when designing an army. Here we go. And now we got a better look at the old school demons. So the old flamers. I remember a buddy of mine had these. Basically like a mushroom body with like a bird head. Crazy. The old pink and blue horrors. Now in Second Dead, when you killed a pink horror, it became two blue horrors. They'd done away with that in this edition. They both just became the same thing. And they're basically just heads with arms and legs. Like, silly, right? And there's the old demonettes. Look like vampires with crab claws. Not attractive at all. Unlike the next round of pewters, which are beautiful. Just beautiful women with six boobies each. And here you go, just showing you some basic Chaos Space Marine paint scheme. So this is the very basic Iron Warrior scheme. Which I'm glad has evolved since. I play Iron Warriors personally, and this is just way too basic. But, they're trying to show beginners how to do this, right? And it doesn't even look like there's any washes used or anything. You know, it's just a dry brush, trim, extra color for detail, boom, done. Same with the Dreadnought. Dry brush, paint the gold trim, paint the little details, done. Quick, easy cast Space Marines, get them on the battlefield, start playing. Cool, and now the conversion page. Some of my favorite stuff from back in this edition. Cool Chaos Space or uh, Chaos Spawn Arm on the Chaos Space Marine. I was telling you a very simple way to paint blood letters by using red inks, making them look wet and bloody. And just some cool scratch built type conversion stuff. So there you go, there's a possessed rhino. I mean a possessed predator. 
Now this is before the current Plastic Rhino and also before the Chaos uh, Vehicle Upgrade Sprue guys, so that kind of tells you something. Because later on they give you these gargoyle heads to put as the warp flame. And this they actually use the head of a crater demon on the front, that's hilarious. Okay, moving on. There you go, the old school Oblitz I was talking about. Oh, neat. Hmm, Plastic Orc Power Claw on the... Yeah, that's cool. The old school Second Ed Power Claw. This is pretty cool. It's like Demonette Claws on a old school Chaos Space Marine model. I actually want to find out what that was. Left and above. Fred has added to the models are claws from the demon S used for the top model and plastic orc power claw. Oh, so he's using it as a corn dude. Huh, with two Eldar chain swords and a demon S claw. Oh, he's gonna mark a corn on his forehead. Weird. Again, square bases, square bases, square bases. <laughs> So there you go, this is the old Demon Prince model, but they put a Minotaur head on him. Which is cool, but awfully strange looking. The old Bloodthirster. But I still got one of these, and I still got one of these as well. Um, this guy I've chewed him for bits though, which is kind of sad, but I love that sort of devil looking head as opposed to like the dog head they came out with later. And now the new plastic one just, of course, blows this out of the water, but anyway. Moving on. Oh, so there's... Some conversions for Fabius Biles Enhanced Warriors. Actually, I think this was a pewter upgrade sprue. Yeah, it totally was with the faces on the outside of their helmets. Yeah. I think that was a pewter upgrade sprue. Cool. Old school Abaddon. Old school Cypher. They really need to redo the Abaddon model. I can't believe they haven't yet. It's just absolutely nuts. Like, I see people just use the normal plastic Cast Space Marine Lord and then just give them, you know, a claw and a sword, or a top knot and a sword. They just, they really need to redo that model. It's so sad. A lot of these characters don't get redone. Look <laughs> at these silly possessed marines. That's hilarious. I don't even know where the heck they got that snake head from. That is nuts. And the old school blood litter head. That just looks ridiculous. What a weird time. Ah, converted a disc. Yep, Karn's body. Chaos Renegade chain, flying disc constructed from Necromunda Ripper Jacks in the green stuff molded over a spray can lit. Simple and effective. Rhino conversions. Neat. And this one, look at this. They covered the entire thing in green stuff and then put like cuts all over it. Like it's made of flesh and it's bleeding. Super cool. There's the old Thousand Sun heads, pewter upgrade heads. And the old Demon Prince, there you go once again. Square base, square base, square base, square base. And there you go, the Dreadnought with the old Juggernaut head. Old Peter Juggernaut. Cool. It's a neat Havoc launcher conversion. And I guess that's it, guys. So let's take a final look at this awesome Chaos Army they've given us here to take a gander at. There's a mixture of all the models. Again, all old school models. They haven't come up with any of the new plastic kits. Again, with the with new additions, um, you know what I mean? Like they use, even if the new models had come out at this point, it's like they wanted to take all the pictures ahead of time. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, of course they use the old school models, even though by the time this book's released, there's probably the new Rhinos and the new Land Raiders and stuff are already out. I don't know that for a fact, but I assume. And then here we've just got some cool conversions. Like these are the two that they showed us in Pewter, uh, back in the color pages there. And then this is just a cool Raptor conversion. It's just a Plague Marine, so I guess Nurgle Raptors. A Plague Marine with Harpy Wings. The old school Pewter Harpy models. And notice how the demons have square bases here too. That picture I know is directly from Second Dead. We saw that in the Second Dead Chaos Space Marine book. Still applicable, I suppose, even in this edition. 
And there it is. Codex Chaos Space Marines 3rd Edition. So hope you guys are really enjoying our journey for 3rd Edition. That was the Chaos Space Marine book. And next week we're going to be taking a look at the Orc book. Super fun because I love my green skins. Uh, so this Orc book actually... Um, even though it came out at the beginning of 3rd, actually lasted all the way through 4th. Uh, we didn't actually get a new book until like right before 5th drop. Uh, and even then, after that, we didn't even get another one until like 7th. Um, so, you know, the orcs get shafted. But this book, just the rules were so freaking amazing. And they were even amazing when they changed the rules to fourth that they didn't even have to come out with a new book. This book was so good. So I hope you guys are looking forward to checking that out la next week. Next week. Last week. Next week. Hope you guys are looking forward to checking that out next week. <laughs> this week, I hope you guys enjoyed the look at Chaos Space Marines. Again, this is when I started playing Chaos, so this was the first book uh, I jumped into Chaos with. And it only got better after that. I mean, literally the... 3.5 slash fourth one was great. The 4.5 one was a little weird, right before fifth there. But then uh, the sixth that one was just spectacular. So anyway, <clears throat> it's cool to see the evolution of this stuff, right? I love looking at these old books too, because like I say, I'm a bibliophile. Uh, and on top of that, it actually brings back some great memories for me from my childhood. And I hope it does the same for you guys. And for those of you that didn't play back in these editions, I hope it's educational for you and it really shows you how the game has evolved, how the various armies have evolved. Plus it's kind of cool to just see the cool stuff from the past and how weird and goofy it looks compared to a lot of the new stuff. Or even how cool it looks even in comparison to the new stuff. Because some old stuff is even cooler in my opinion than some of the latest and greatest. You know what I mean? So anyway, Hit the like button below if you liked this video. Make sure to hit subscribe if you want to see future videos. And hit that little bell notification so that it tells you when our future videos come out. I don't just do these uh, Relics of the Dark Age, guys. We do hobby tutorials. We do uh, painting tutorials. We have terrain tutorials. We have battle reports. We even have a podcast. Uh, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff, just fun stuff that we do on this channel, all wargaming related. And we don't just do 40k, we also do Malifaux, we do Infinity from time to time. Uh, plus we are getting into a whole bunch of new miniature games, guys, which I'm not going to go over right now. But there is going to be some crazy stuff coming up in the future, so stay tuned for that. In order to stay tuned for that, you got to hit that subscribe button and that little bell button. It's just that simple. Just a click like click subscribe and click that bell and you're set to go but if you want to help us out and you know sort of return the favor back help us uh, make things better around here get better equipment like I say we're always doing terrain we're doing new miniature games all the time and providing trying to provide you guys with the best content we possibly can and uh, so if you want to help support us monetarily to help us produce said content <clears throat> You can head to the description below and check out our Spreadshirt page, first of all. Buy yourself a nice t-shirt with our logo on it, or uh, a hat, or whatever else you want with our logo on it. And we get a few bucks from that, it just helps us. Um, and it gets you a cool t-shirt, or a cool hat, or a tote bag, or whatever the heck you want. Uh, a coffee mug, even, with our logo on it. But aside from that, <clears throat> we also have a Patreon campaign, guys. So go down and check it out in the description below. Uh, and for as little as a dollar a video, or even a dollar a month, um, it can help us out a lot, like I say, it gives us a little bit of money to help, like I say, improve our equipment and keep going with all the terrain and various miniature games that we do, plus help us keep the lights on, if you know what I mean. Um, and in return you get a whole bunch more stuff, so for that single dollar, it gets you a whole bunch more content, it gets you behind the scenes content, like I say, when we do series of videos, a lot of the time we'll put one video in that series for patrons only. Uh, so it gets you access to those things. Plus you get 10% off the Warpainter.com, which is awesome because he's got lots of Vallejo, Scale 75, Broken Toad, all those brushes, uh, all those brands that are hard to find elsewhere. Uh, just by being a patron of ours, by paying that $1, you get 10% off all your purchases of Vallejo paints and stuff mailed right to your front door. So, I mean, you really can't go wrong. Also, check out our website, EncounterWarGaming.com. On there, uh, it'll have links to all of our various social medias as well as a um, archive of all our past podcasts uh, if you want to check that out. And uh, I guess that's all to be said for now, so we'll see you at our next encounter. Hey, everybody. I'm Adam. And I'm Jay. We are Encounter Wargaming.
And we wanted to celebrate hitting our 1,500 subscribers with giving some stuff away. What are we giving away, Adam? Fort Bang! Yeah. All right, we're calling this the 2,500 subscriber Forge Bang giveaway because that's the target we need to hit to give this puppy away. That's right. So the first thing you need to do is share this video, the video you are watching right now. And then click subscribe on YouTube. If you haven't already. That's it for one entry. And the more you share it, hopefully, the more people we can get to hit subscribe and hit that 2,500. Woohoo! But there are other ways to win as well. Tell them about it. Well, you can follow us on Twitch. That will also get you an entry. So you subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Twitch. On top of that, support us on Patreon for five big buckaroo entries. Crazy. So also all the people that already support us on Patreon, don't worry, you're also five entries. But also, you can hit subscribe on Twitch. Subscribing on Twitch will get you another five entries into the contest. So good. And all of this to say thank you guys for all the support. We appreciate it very much. We've come a long way, and it's because of you. It's true. It's been a wild ride, and thanks for all the support, all the help. And we want to give, a, give you some cool stuff as a thank you. Awesome. So, hey, remember to share this video. And, uh, guys, I think that's it. So, we'll see you at our next encounter. Like a monkey in a rocket on his way back home.